April 6, 2022. We left Nariet, Mexico, or Marina La Cruz, where we always seem to go. It's in our rear view back there. Got out here, spent some time on the fuel dock, topped off the tanks, and uh, visited with a couple folks that were saying goodbye to us. Finally got off the dock at 11 a.m. and out here. And listen, there's no motor. Not a lot of wind. So our plan is to just take our time and sail and play to Puerto Vallarta. No, not to Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> We're not going to Puerto Vallarta. We are going to Mazalan. Finally catching some wind out here. Got about 13 knots of wind. We're doing five. I just thought I'd give you a look now compared to what we had just a little bit ago when we were doing two. So it's kind of nice. Well, it's getting into the uh, evening of our first day out of uh, La Cruz, heading north to Mazatlan. And we, we uh, motored for a couple of hours, um, thinking that that might help us get on route, but it didn't really keep us on route. So we are um, modifying our route so that uh, it looks like we're on our route. But really, we are following the wind, going where the wind leads us because we want to sail and not motor. I had to shut the front uh, windshield since it was getting a little cool, but the sun's getting ready to set behind these clouds. So I thought I would just give you a real quick look at that. The moon is actually up above our spreader. I don't know if you can see it, above our shredded Mexican flag. Let's see if I can get that. I don't know if it'll show. But anyway, it's up there. The, it's about a quarter moon showing up. It is 8 o'clock at night. The water has calmed down some, and as you can see, we are sailing. And it's quiet. Listen, the boom is the only thing making any noise, besides the water. Yes, and us. Anyway, we're doing about four knots. We got about seven knots of apparent wind so we're not getting much much help at all we'll see what we need to do here when we make our next turn uh, how we're going to adjust these sails for nighttime so there the sun is beginning to go behind all of those clouds and it probably won't peak out again so there won't be any nice sunset that we're going to be able to give you tonight on our first night, overnight, of our sailing day. Sailing day. Got it? Got it. But anyway, there it is. Wind's starting to die down. Oh yeah, the wind is dying totally. Down to six knots. Yeah, it was yeah, it was just seven a minute ago. But we're still doing over four knots. So and there you go. Better sunset, we'll get it later. Well, it just keeps getting better. Uh, we keep thinking that yeah, it's behind the clouds now. I'm not gonna look at that. It's dropping down below the clouds. And it's just Bob, big orange ball. So as it goes in sailboat stories, we've got Rick out on the bow because our port nav light was not working uh, on the bow. And so we um, turned on the tricolor and the port nav light was not working on it. 
Well, it is now, I can see it. But he's up the front in the dark with a headlamp trying to fix that nav light, which needs to be fixed. We need it. We don't need to run the tricolor all night, but we can if we need. But as things go, there you go. Having to be on the bow in the dark working on tiny, tiny wires. So we ended up having to motor quite a bit more than we wanted to because of the uh, the winds of course were uh, on our nose and when you start talking about sailing to get to your destination and you realize that you can't sail within 45 degrees either way of the direction the wind is coming from then suddenly your 200 mile trip becomes a 400 mile trip and so instead of doing two overnights now you're doing four or five overnights so you have to uh, make your fight your battles wins the one you can wins the one you ones that you can and uh, then we start the engine and we run the engine for a while but we've done done better than we've done on any of the other trips I'll say that and uh, we're planning on continuing this until sunset and uh, then we'll put the sails down store them uh, get them ready and uh, we'll be motoring for the rest of the night and then we should arrive by tomorrow afternoon in Mazatlan our evening early evening so that's uh that's the story and I'm sticking to it and I've done my duty so did you talk about why the rock is white yes it is white because birds live on it and birds poop on it and it is gross <laughs> we were thinking of uh, the time we were in uh, Half Moon Bay in California and the um, Pillar Point Marina and Half Moon Bay which is encircled with a, a jetty so it's really nice and protected in there but the entire top of the jetty if you remember was white because of all of the birds that nest and live and stand on those jetties because it's quite a big fishing community and the fish fishermen come in and go out of there and those pelicans and seabirds are uh, and it when you first go in there it smells to high heaven from all of the bird poop once you've been in there for a few days you don't really notice it but initially it's it's pretty bad and my guess is Blanco Rock is a just like that so we won't be going over there and uh, paying any visits on Blanco Rock keep an eye out it's going it's going do you see a green flash when it gets down all the way cloud cover around it. Yeah. Pretty. Looks like it's just melting and blobbing out. <laughs> it's going to melt into the clouds. Dying ember of the sun. Yeah, we've got a welcoming party here this morning coming into Mazatlan. There's a big pod of dolphins. And a few of them came over and escorted us in a little ways. Oh, just missed that one. There he is. It's always nice to have a welcome.
welcoming party, bringing you into the marina. All right, here's a closer look at coming into Mazalan, Mexico, if you've never been here. So as you're looking through my lines here, try to get right at the end of, you can see where the new construction is being built over there. We're going to pan to the right. There is a beige building and then a white building. So it would be the very first white building after the rocks. That's where El Cid Marina is and that's where we're headed. When you go into this marina, you must stay to the north side of the entrance. So obviously it's either shallow in there or there is some rocks, but they tell you every time you talk to them when you come in, stay to the north side of the shore. So that's what we'll do. But that's a look from the water of what's going on here in Matsala. So we're here in Matsalan and we're going to be walking the Malkan from the farthest end. So there's like the Grande Hotel, which is El Cid, and another one back here. And then we're at the El Cid Marina. So we're going to go for a walk here with our friends Kahani and Rob of Ahonakai. They're our gracious hosts wherever we go because they've been here longer. <laughs> We'll just take you along for a short little walk. And I have a feeling the Malcon here is going to be the same way as it is in any others, full of shops. And um, it'll be interesting to see what we see here. Come along. Oh, and just a note, as we were on the shuttle from the hotel at the marina coming here, we were informed that while we were in the cruise, we had daylight savings time that went into effect on the 3rd. So we set our clocks one hour, isn't that cool? One hour ahead. And now we get here and we have to set them back one hour. So it's going to be confusing wherever we go <laughs> as to what time zone we're in. That cool painting on that the parking garage. To go to the back we're taller. Yeah. So. so we took a shortcut down here off of the main street and we're down here on the beach. So we're walking the beach. Did you guys go around both islands when you came in? Yeah, we went on the outside, yeah. Well, I wondered if we couldn't, but you just, you never know what's in here when it's yeah, half yeah. dark, you know? Yeah, it would have probably been, uh, well, you know, the approach would have been straighter. If you look at the Navionic uh, map, you know, it says all down the coastline, don't be this close because they don't, you know, the shore or whatever, they don't know or... Right, so right. They stay way out the whole way. Yeah. Until finally, uh, yeah, the waves I saw are pretty a couple cool of out boats here. going across that area and coming through. Okay. So there's Agatha. Not, uh, doesn't appear to be open. A lot of hotels down this lane. And this is Playa Bonita. We passed Playa Matzelan. So just a lot of touristy hotels and things. Here's my next t-shirt. Put that on the boat. I'll wear that. Everybody will think I'm standing there like that. which would be a not in real life, not happening. 
everything is way down the other end. And that's all the way around. All the way it around. It goes wow. all the way down this way, and then like where you see the antennas on that hill. Yeah. The other side of that is old Mazatlan downtown. Ah. Yeah, that is a long. I way. saw that uh, island. Yeah. Great statue for the carnival here. Got the Joker on top. Well, actually, it's not the Joker because it's a female. So we should go take a picture in front of the uh, sign over there. nine of them and we're gonna go up to one of them hopefully I'll get a good shot of it so bear with us and stay tuned Butchers. It's almost overwhelming. The sensory overload of all the colors, all the noises, all the smells. 